This is going to be episode two of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at Lucifer and the land before man. In eternity past, God had a plan. And his plan was that he wanted a universe full of sinless beings to fellowship with and to worship him. It was not his plan for any of the creation to sin. That's clear. Every sin you commit is completely your fault. You made a choice to do each and every sin that you have committed in your life. And God's plan was to have a world of sinless beings who loved him and worshipped him. As we know, he didn't get what he wanted. It isn't God's fault. It's his creation's fault. It isn't that God failed. It's that they failed. We failed. It isn't that God didn't know that we would fail. It's that he allows his creation to have a free will. He also knew through his foreknowledge that sin would happen. However, he gives all of his creatures a free will to choose him or to choose sin. An atheist will, will ask, Why did God create life knowing that it would go downhill? It's because God wanted someone to fellowship with. He, want, he wanted someone to worship him and love him. He didn't want them to be cloned robots who were made to obey him. He wanted them to choose him out of their own free will. And if you're not happy with this answer, then you'll have a time where you can ask him at the great white throne judgment for yourself. And I'm sure he would be happy to answer you then. So let that be clear. It isn't that God failed. It was that his creatures failed. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 1. And here we begin to talk about Lucifer. The first king in God's game of thrones. If you look at Genesis 1-1 and 1-2... In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. If you're familiar with your Bible, then you know that Lucifer, also known as the devil and Satan, at one time had a throne. And you know that at one time he was sinless. At one time he was the top dog. He was the the man at one point. Now, what I'm going to show you is when that time actually was. There has to be a certain time when Lucifer reigned as king because the Bible describes it. As you see in Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. So we can all agree that God did not create Lucifer as a sinful creature. What I want to show you is that there was a period of time between the first two verses in the Bible, the two verses that I just read, a time between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2 where Lucifer was a sinless being. And that's all I'm teaching by teaching a gap between those two verses is that Lucifer, the other cherubim, the seraphim, the angels, and other angelic creatures were created before the six literal days of creation. And that God allowed Lucifer to reign before the six literal days of creation. That's it. That's all I'm teaching by saying this. There's no other motive behind it. Because the description of the six literal days of creation doesn't show you the creation of these beings, and it doesn't show you a time for Lucifer's throne. Because as you know, in Genesis 1.28, it says, Adam has the dominion. I'm not saying the Lord couldn't do these things and allow them to happen in that time frame, but I just don't believe he did. So this period of time is a time when God allowed Lucifer or Satan or the devil or the dragon to be king. This was a time when Lucifer was sinless, and we can both agree on the fact that there was a time when he was a perfect being called the anointed cherub. We can both agree on that fact, even if we can't, can't agree on when that time was. Because it says in Ezekiel twenty-eight fourteen and 15, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. 
So that is one of my main reasons for believing in a period of time between the first two verses of the Bible. There had to be a period of time when God allowed Lucifer to have a throne as king over the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. That's until Lucifer wanted to usurp God and be king over God's heaven. However, before he sinned, you had Lucifer in a land before man. I don't believe in humans before Adam. Let's make that clear. There was no humans before Adam. Believing in a gap in the first two verses can give people the wrong idea. I don't believe in a pre-Adamic race of humans. I don't believe God used evolution. And I don't even say I believe in an old earth, which is billions of years old. I'm not using this gap between the first two verses of the Bible to account for billions of years. I honestly don't know how long Lucifer was allowed by God to reign before he was lifted up in pride and fell. Now let's look at this land before man. Job 38, chapter 4 through 7. It says, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So these morning stars and sons of God were here when God laid the foundation of the earth. This shows these beings were here in a land before man. Because Adam and Eve, you see, hadn't even been created yet. When God was laying the foundations of the earth, these beings, the morning stars and sons of God, were shouting for joy. This was before Adam and Eve. So what about this land? What is it like? What is this land before man like? Well, but we've already seen it's a land of spirit beings. What was on earth during this period of time, during this gap, as people call it? Well, the sons of God, which are spiritual beings. This is why Lucifer was king of the kingdom of God, because he was over spiritual beings. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Angels and spirits can fly according to the Bible. Daniel 9.21 proves this. Imagine if the Lord put you in a time machine and let you drop down from the sky and see this land before man. I imagine you would see spirit beings whose transportation is by flying or even teleportation. Realize that God gives out power to his creation. You would have powerful creatures with free will walking around, flying around, in this land before man. And many of these spirit beings who are walking around at this time are your greatest enemies today. I, I guarantee you some of these same spirit beings that were here thousands of years ago are your biggest enemies today. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's hard to imagine how these once sinless creatures who saw God face to face could turn their back on him and go after his own children. But they rebelled. They left the ways of righteousness to follow the former king of both kingdoms, Lucifer. So in God's game of thrones, you have betrayal. You have a bunch of traitors. But we also see that these musical creatures, these are musical creatures, so this land before man was a musical land. The morning stars sing together, according to Job 38. So these are musical creatures under the anointed cherub who actually has tabrets and pipes built into him, according to Ezekiel 28. Music was created to give glory to God. Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Could this be why you have some of the greatest attacks from the spirit world in the form of popular music today? 
music that influences people to commit crimes, do drugs, have sex, commit acts of violence on others, and the like. You know why? Because the king, God himself, who all of these spirit beings wanted to be, you know, usurp authority over, they make this music to go, go against everything that he says because they are rebels and they wanted the throne and they want worship and they get worship through the artists of the popular music. But what would it be like if you could go back and walk the streets of this land before man? Maybe hear the music they're singing and playing as you walk. Lucifer was the first being to sin. So before his fall, there would have been no sin. So you would have a land full of righteousness, a land of diverse kinds of angelic creatures that God created. And if the Lord created the firmament on the second day of recreation, then there wouldn't have been anything separating the world from the third heaven. And you would hear the sounds of music that gave praise to God and it would echo throughout the land to the throne of God. It's a musical land. And next, it's, it's a land of gold and precious stones. In Ezekiel 28, 13, it talks about how Lucifer had a covering of onyx, gold, and other precious stones. And maybe some of these precious stones were throughout the land and left behind after the first flood. Because as you read in Genesis 2, 11, it says, the name of the first is Pison, that is, that, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is the bedellium and the onyx stone. Sure, God could have made these in the recreation and put them there. But it also makes sense that the same precious stones you see there in Genesis 2 could have been left over from the first flood because Lucifer himself had these built into his very being but imagine walking down the streets of this land before man seeing the precious stones on the creatures that could have been left behind from the flood of Genesis 1-2 even though he had all of these material possessions and he was perfect spiritually Lucifer's eyes were never satisfied he had everything you could ever want, but he wanted to be the greatest. He wanted to be king over everything, the supreme king. So he chose rebellion, and for this reason the Lord made hell. So the creatures around at this time are Lucifer, the sons of God, cherubims and seraphim. I'm also just speculating, but imagine... I imagine there is a lot of a lot more angelic like creatures that the Lord hasn't even told us about that were roaming around the earth. And Lucifer rules during this time as king over the kingdom of heaven, which isn't the third heaven, and over the kingdom of God, a spiritual kingdom. And this is God's game of thrones. He's in control. He controls it just like he could you could control a DVD player. He can pause it, hit play. Rewind, press fast forward. He's over the game. And if a person doesn't believe in the gap, then they have to place the creation of Lucifer and seraphim and cherubim and angels during the six literal days of creation. They have to place Lucifer as a sinless creature in those six days even though it doesn't mention anything about it during those six days. You would have to put all of this going on in that short time frame. They also have to make the fall of Satan in the garden when he tempted Eve. However, in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, it shows us that Lucifer's sin had to do with his pride and wanting to be exalted above God. He was already, already wicked and already fallen before he approached Eve. Although sin came into the world through Adam, Adam was not the first person to sin. Adam wasn't even the first human to sin. 
the order of sin went like this. Lucifer, then Eve, and then Adam. So to say you have disproven the gap theory, because sin came into the world through Adam, and you show Romans 5.12, you're just taking the verse out of context. Sin came into man because of Adam. Sin came into the, the world because of Adam, but the devil sinned first. He was already the serpent when he appeared to Eve. In Genesis 3.1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. If you look at the word serpent in the Bible, you see that it has a connection to sin. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Jesus Christ became our serpent on a pole when he became sin. The devil, the serpent, Lucifer, had already sinned well before he tempted Eve in the garden. Through Satan's rebellion, it caused God to destroy this original earth, and that's where you see Genesis 1-2. Now, look back at Genesis 1-1. And let's just go over some of these phrases and words in this, these first two verses of the Bible. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So notice the phrase, without form and void. And when you search the phrase, it would take you to a verse in Jeremiah where it says in Jeremiah 4.23, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was up without form and void in the heavens, and they had no light. Now, this verse may not be a description of Genesis 1-2, but it obviously refers to an act of destruction, a time of chaos from God, and even actually referring to the future tribulation time period, a time of destruction and chaos. In Jeremiah 4.27, it says, For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. So you have the phrase, without form and void, connected to a time of destruction and chaos. So it isn't much of a stretch to believe that when the Bible says in Genesis 1-2 that the earth was without form and void, the Lord didn't actually create it without form and void. But it was actually that way because a disaster had just taken place. A verse in Isaiah 45 shows that the Lord formed the earth to be inhabited. In Isaiah 45, 18 said, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. So if he formed it to be inhabited... That sounds like the opposite of without form and void. So it isn't far-fetched to believe that Genesis 1-1 speaks of when the Lord created the heaven and the earth. He formed it to be inhabited. But disaster took place when Lucifer fell, and then Genesis 1-2 says the earth was without form and void. And I believe that there was a flood there that Second Peter talks about. But Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven, and the earth. So here's where the devil, as Lucifer, was given the crown over both kingdoms. He falls, and this results in a disaster. You have a flood. Then, Genesis 1 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So, what was the disaster? It was a flood, and not Noah's flood. 2 Peter 3 3 talks about a flood. But if you look at it closely, it doesn't look like Noah's flood. It says in 2 Peter 3.3, 3, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Verse 4, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Notice it says, from the beginning of the creation. Noah's flood didn't happen at the beginning of the creation. Remember that. The flood that happened between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2 did. Now to 2 Peter 3-5, For this they are willingly ignorant of, that were it by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So in this flood you had the earth standing out of the water and in the water. During Noah's flood, the earth wasn't out of the water and in the water, it was completely covered. 
in Genesis 7, 19, it says, And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. So you see how in Noah's flood, it was completely covered. 2 Peter 3, 6, it says, Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, but the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the judgment of and perdition of ungodly men. So notice in verse 6 that it says, The world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. The world didn't perish in Noah's flood. The people perished. So when Lucifer sinned, way back, when he was king in God's game of thrones, God brought a flood that destroyed the world. This made the earth without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. Then the Lord would recreate the earth in six literal days, as it talks about in Ezekiel 20.11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Also note that during the description of the creation in Genesis 1, the dry land was submerged under water, and the Lord moved the waters back to cause it to appear. See, Genesis 1, 9 and 10, it says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So the dry land was submerged under water because of this flood. Now, Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, we have looked at the phrase without form and void. Now, take that word darkness and search it throughout the scriptures, and you'll see it is always in a very negative light. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 5, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Run that word darkness through the Bible, and you'll see a pattern that it is connected with things wicked, evil, with judgment, things that are negative. And another reason I believe the devil, as Lucifer, reigned in the land before man is because of the word replenish. God told Adam to replenish the earth. Genesis 1.28 says, God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. If there wasn't something inhabiting the earth before Adam, then why was he told to replenish the earth? And if you look up the word replenish in the dictionary, it says it can mean to fill, to just fill, but it can also mean to refill. But when you look at the word replenish in the Bible, it always means to refill. After Noah's flood, Noah is told to replenish. Is Noah refilling the earth, or was he just filling? He isn't only filling, he's refilling it. Showing you that the Lord is using replenish in the sense of refill. You say, well, I just think replenish means to fill and not refill. Okay, that's fine. But I just can't do that with a good conscience. You ask, well, why is that? Because in Genesis 1, the same chapter that says replenish... The Lord actually also says the word fill. In Genesis 1, 21 and 22, it says, And God created great wells and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. So why didn't the Lord tell the wells to replenish? Why did he just say fill? And if replenish just means fill, then why didn't he just tell Adam to fill the earth? Like he did there in Genesis 1.22. It seems the Lord is showing that replenish means to refill and not to just fill. Since he used both words in the same chapter and also uses the re replenish as to refill in other places in Scripture, it leads us to believe that Adam is replenishing, refilling the earth because it was formerly inhabited by spirit beings some men may be turned off about this teaching because they find it hard to believe. And, you know, that's fine. They find it hard to believe that there could be a significant amount of time or event in between two verses. However, you could consider that there are other places 
where you have examples of many years within just one verse. In Isaiah 61, 2, it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So the comma in this verse separates a time period of at least 2,000 years. The first part talks about the first coming. And the second part of the verse, the day of vengeance, is the second coming. So there you have an example of a huge gap within a single verse. There are other examples of this in the Bible. But overall, this teaching is really not a big deal to me about which way you choose to believe. I would never criticize someone for believing different on this. I would never accuse anyone of not being a Bible believer for not believing in this gap. We can all agree on one thing. There was a time when Lucifer was the anointed cherub and he was the first king in God's game of thrones. Where you place that doesn't really matter as long as you know that that's a fact because it explains it in Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. But this has been Lucifer and the land before man.